So in this video, we're gonna be looking at how to turn your audio from this all the way up to this. This is Aiden Wolf. I do want to point out that I use Adobe Audition for this, uh, whether or not you use Reaper or you use anything else, it doesn't matter. Most of these steps can be done in any DAW. Now I use four to five steps when I'm treating my audio. And usually it's for the fifth one is if you didn't follow the rules. Now I released a video last week. You'll see it in one of these two corners the rules of recording audio and editing audio. Now watch that video first if you're a bit of a rookie or a beginner with recording and editing audio. It's definitely got some tips and tricks in there that you can use to make sure you're getting the best audio every single time. Now out of those four steps, number one that I use is noise reduction. Now I don't always use it. It's kind of optional. I record in a pretty quiet environment. I don't have a lot of background noise. But if you do, maybe you have the hum of your furnace in the background or a fridge or something that just bothers you in that audio and you want to get rid of it, noise reduction is the way to go. So let's take a look at this piece of audio. Now this is me doing a bit of an intro. And I mean, it is what it is. Uh, you can see if you really scan in, you can see there's a little bit of noise in the background. I believe this is just the hum of my computer. Now, normally you won't be able to hear this if you're listening to the video on YouTube or if you're listening to a podcast in earbuds, this probably won't be transferred through. But a lot of the times you can have uh, much bigger tones in the background. So in order to fix this on Adobe Audition, that's, uh, you just have to select a piece of the audio that doesn't have any voice in it. So it's just room tone. Now I do suggest whenever you're recording something, whether it's a podcast, video, whatever, make sure you get a few seconds of room tone before and or after, just in case you do actually need to do this. Now with this selected, you just have to go up to effects, noise reduction and capture noise print. Now this is going to capture the print that's in here. You hit okay. And then you choose it all hit effects and you go down to noise reduction and you do noise reduction process. Just hit apply. Usually I stick with what's already kind of pre-done on here. Never had any issues with it when I do have to remove, remove noise, but right here it's just doing a 50% noise reduction and it's reducing it by 16 decibels. So that's just that simple. You hit apply and you will notice it doesn't really change much about the audio, but if you look in here, that's a flat line. Noise is gone. Now, the second thing I do, or first, depending on whether or not you did any noise reduction, is going to be EQing. Now, EQing can be really intimidating because you see a graph or you see a bunch of knobs to go up and down and you have no idea what it means. Well, let's go through it. For the EQ in Adobe Audition, I'll go into effects. I'll go down to filter and EQ and I use the parametric equalizer. Now, this is a custom that I have done, okay? This one is set up kind of for my voice. A uh, good friend of mine, Dylan, who you've seen in other videos uh, on this channel. He also does some music for this channel, Once in a Blue Moon. Uh, some great music, by the way. He set this up for me and then I lost the preset. So I went back in and I had to build this curve by myself. Now, if you're using Adobe Audition and you need a starting point for an EQ curve, this one isn't bad to use. Now, let me explain. In here, you've got your low end roll off. Okay, so these are all your bassy, rumbly sounds. Those things are just completely blotted out. And up here is that curve to move it in and around. You can see all the numbers here at 50 hertz, uh, you know, where it's going. Here is at 190 hertz, it's negative 3.3 decibels. You can see it all along here. So it's bringing down the low end. I'm taking a little bit of the muddiness out of my voice right around the 200 hertz mark. I'm bringing up the higher end of my voice up here and I'm finishing off way up here with just kind of a presence boost on the high end. That's all it is. Now, if you really want to have this and it's a nice starting point because you can attach this to your voice and then you can kind of tweak the little things, the mid presence kind of clarity, the high end boost, and you can kind of focus it to your voice a little bit better. Um, if you want to do that, just kind of take a screenshot of all these numbers down here and go ahead and apply that in Adobe Audition. Next up, after you do the EQing, you want to kind of 
level everything out. Now, a lot of people use things called levelator, the normalized process a lot of people like to use. I don't personally like anything that's a blanket effect laid across the audio because it can impact some audio different than others. And I'm sure you've probably run into that. You've tried to throw a blanket effect onto something and it makes some of it sound great, but then the, some other stuff just sounds like garbage. So what I do is I actually go through and I massage my audio. Now, what does that mean? Okay. So if you look at some of these peaks here, some of the peaks are quite a bit higher than the average audio. Now the average audio is basically right down the middle there. And you can see you have pretty normal peaks in through here, but then all of a sudden you have these really, really tall peaks. Now these tall peaks are really, really loud. And to get rid of them, all you have to do is limit them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get in, we're gonna select it as close as we can, and we're gonna just bring that down. So it kind of matches the average of everything else. And we're gonna do the same thing here. We're just gonna bring that down. So it matches the average of everything else. And once you've gone through all of the audio like this, you're gonna notice that it doesn't really impact the sound. You can listen to it. You don't hear the volume dipping in and out because you're taking such a small section of the audio and bringing it down. This is a really important step soon. <laughs> it's coming up. The reason this is important, you're gonna see with the next step. So we're gonna go through, we're just gonna finish off a few of these. There we go. And then we're gonna finish off this one. And that should be pretty good. There you go. Now you see they're all pretty, pretty standard across. You don't have any really anything really standing out. So from there, your next step is compression. Ooh. This is the point. Now that we've gotten here, if you wanna add any de-essers, if you wanna use deep breath, or you wanna use any of those blanket effects that might actually help out with, uh, I know deep breath is a big one. This is the time to do that before you've done anything else. Personally, I don't like to use a deep breath across the whole thing. I like to go through there and take the breaths or minimize the breaths myself. Um, do as you will. I do know there's a lot of aggressive deep breathers that will actually take out different parts of the word. Uh, but from there, uh, it's basically just compression to bring everything up and kind of give it its fullness. And that's how I do this with Adobe Audition. So watch this. What I like to use is under amplitude and compression and is dynamics processing. Now, if you look under here, there's a ton of stuff that you can apply to this. Now you've got de -essers, um, you've got stereo rock mix, vocal limiter. That's one of my, <laughs> that's not as good as you might think it is. The one I like to use is called Classic Soft Knee. Classic Soft Knee has been used in radio for years. And what it does is it brings down a lot of the peaks and it brings the lows up just a little bit. So it kind of averages everything out. So we're gonna hit apply on that. You're gonna notice now that everything is really, really uniform across the board. So you don't really have any too many big, big peaks sticking out. If you do, now's a good time to just go over and just give them a gentle nudge down. You don't wanna be hitting anything too hard with the, uh, the volume controls. You just wanna give it a nice, gentle little nudge. That's pretty good. That's pretty much what I do with my audio. Now the last step is kind of another optional one. It all depends on personal taste. From here, I just bring the volume up a bit to the point where I'm comfortable, where I'm not gonna be blowing anybody's ears out, but at the same time, it's gonna be a consistent volume the whole way through the track. And it's just those simple little steps. And it, while it can be uh, overwhelming when you have a large bank of audio that you've got to treat, really the only piece of it that's difficult to treat are the actual peaks where you've got to go through and manually take them out. Spend the extra few minutes, do that, and it gives you a nicer, crisper sound in the end. Now. I shouldn't have to tell you that if you're doing multiple tracks in a multi-track, make sure you're treating each track individually. Everybody has a different voice. Everybody gets a different EQ. It's just how it is. And if you follow these steps, you're gonna find you have some amazing audio. By the way, I just wanted to let you know, I've got an IXM podcaster coming this week. I'm gonna be doing a review. You're not gonna to wanna to miss this. This is that microphone that you it records the audio in the microphone. It's 
blows me away. Wildly expensive microphone. It's going to be an amazing sit down. I'm going to be taking that thing apart and actually trying it out over the next week. And I'll let you know my thoughts next Friday. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and uh, hey, why not hit the like button while you're at it. Have yourself a great day and I'll see you in the next video.